Aunt Cynthia, and I want to share this morning on our morning devotions out of Galatians chapter 5. And if you're watching this um, on the day that I'm releasing it, the day that's being recorded is July 4th. So I thought this scripture was very appropriate for our celebration here in the United States. If you're not watching it on the 4th of July and you're or you're not from the United States, continue because the content is relevant to all of us. But I do want to wish everyone a happy 4th of July. So I'm going to be taking two days to go through Galatians chapter 5. I could take a lot longer than that, but I'm going to just do that um, because there's just a couple of things that stuck out to me in um, these two, these 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 few verses here in uh, Galatians 5. And so I want to read to you here. I'm going to be moving things around. Hopefully it won't make you, you dizzy this morning. The Galatians chapter 5, and I read primarily out of the NIV uh, version of the Bible. And the NIV says, it, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. I love that verse. I quote it often. It is for freedom Christ set us free. He set us free because he wants us to be free. And it goes on, stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. I like how that explains exactly what it's saying. Well, here we see in Galatians chapter 5 that Paul is doing a summary of the book of the different things that he's already said in chapters 1 through 4. So here we have a summary in this chapter of what Paul was saying to the people there in Galatia. In the King James Version, we see that the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and not be and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And that's a great uh, rendition, but I think the NIV, for me, just puts it in plain language that we can understand. And I want to just take a couple of seconds and talk about that. And we're going to look at it specifically from the King James Version, because most uh, commentaries, most uh, uh tools that we use to go in to look at original words and so on and so forth is using the King James. Um, I would recommend that you look, if you're not sure about something, that you look at different versions of the Bible uh, before you get too confused if you're having trouble with a verse. Sometimes looking at it just being stated in a different way makes it more clear. So we're going to be looking at verse number one of chapter five of Galatians only today. So this is an appeal. This chapter is an appeal. It's his final appeal to those that he was sending this letter to, to walk in the freedom that Jesus provided for us. This is a, a, a book that Paul wrote. And the fact is that Jesus has made, has made us free. If we're a, a Christian, we have relationship with him, then we are free. If we live in bondage to a legal relationship with God, it isn't because God wills it. Um, if we live in bondages, bondage uh, or bondage in, in this world of some type, then it isn't because God wills it as well. Whatever bondage is operating in your life, it isn't because God willed it. It's because of open doors and because of choices that you may be some wounding and things that have happened to you in the past. So this is a great segue for me to introduce, which I've kind of mentioned once or twice here. I'm trying to get this, this, this light out of my glasses. I know it can be very, very distracting. Um, we here at Believer's House in October are going to be hosting a retreat and a retreat it's a retreat away from the norm and an advancement into spiritual warfare we're going to be doing some teaching on deliverance and some ministry and deliverance and some teaching on inner healing and ministry and inner healing in october so if you want to follow along it's going to be called so free so keep your eye open for so free and that's exactly what this verse is talking about it's talking about freedom how appropriate on the fourth of july so whatever bondages that we have operating in our life, it isn't because God wills it. It isn't something that he wants to have in our life. It isn't an opportunity for him to teach us something. It isn't an opportunity for him to punish us. Whatever bondage is operating in your life, it isn't because God wills it. It isn't something that he wants to have in your life. Because this scripture says, it is for freedom. 
Christ set us free. So the Lord directs us to take his strength and his and and walk his strength and walk in that freedom. And we must remember that Jesus is the one who made us free. We won't make ourselves free. There's nothing that we can do to set ourselves free. It's the gift of Jesus. And it was given to us and we received it by faith. When we struggle to free ourselves, we just become more entangled and beaten down. Today, people live in a, a headlong pursuit of what they say freedom, right? Think about our culture today. They're, I'm going to be free, which they think is doing whatever they want to do. That's so sad. Sorry about that. It's, they think that freedom entails doing whatever they want to do. However, uh, and, and never, and never um, denying any kind of desire. But that, there, certainly that is a kind of freedom, but it's a false freedom, freedom because in the end it, le it leads to death and actually it leads you into more bondage that you were in before. But it's not the freedom. Um, sometimes the, the Bible uses the word, the word liberty. Um, our, freedom from the, it, our freedom is from the tyranny um, that having to earn our own way. Uh, God himself gave us a way to be free and be free from sin and from guilt and condemnation and free from the penalties of all the things that have been operating in our in our lives and even eventually from the complete presence from sin and so at the end of the NIV and at the very beginning of um, the King James, it talks about standing fast or standing firm. And what that means is, is to t it takes effort, effort to stay in place somewhere. When opposition is coming against you, it really does. We have to plant our feet and we have to plant our feet in freedom so that we don't get um, in, in bondage again. And so someone who is legally made free in Jesus can still live in, in bondage. They can be deceived into placing themselves back into slavery. And uh, Galatians chapter 5 talks about that. And I want to give an illustration that I found from D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody is an evangelist of of a while ago. And D.L. DL Moody illustrated this point to those who were involved in a struggle in to become in the full, to get in the fullness of Christ, right? And so he used this illustration, and I thought it was a fabulous illustration. I do not know where it was from. Uh, I just know this is the story that he, that he shared to illustrate this point. And so he shared a story quoting an old former slave woman in the South following the Civil War. Being a former slave, she was confused about her status of freedom, and she asked, Now is I free? Or been I not? When I go to my old master, he says, I ain't free. And when I go to my own people, they say I is. I don't know whether I am free or not. Some people told me that Abraham Lincoln signed a proclamation, but my master says he didn't. And so this is the kind of thing that we get into when we're Christians, because Jesus Christ signed a proclamation proclamation for our freedom with his blood on Calvary and with his death and resurrection he purchased life for us but what's interesting is the enemy of our souls wants us to stay in the bondage that we were in and he as the enemy says no you're not free I'm going to keep you in all the stuff that you have lived in all your life, or I'm going to keep you under. He may switch some bondages, right? He may switch us from from some sort of what we would label sin and, and move us into a bondage of religion. And we'll talk about more about that tomorrow. But see, Jesus has told us that we are free, and we have to choose to listen to the right master. And we must be careful that we do not fall under the law in our lives. We must be careful that we walk firm, free and that we stand firm. God bless you and have a fabulous day.